This is the Natuno. It's an electric mountain bike by a scoot, and it represents their mid-range model coming in at around £1,200 here in the UK. Now, while I was reviewing this bike, I found myself using it for two main use cases. The first being as a commuter bike, getting me from point A to point B nice and quickly. And the other use case, obviously, being as a mountain bike, going off, ripping up trails, and really just having fun with this thing. So with that in mind, I've actually decided to split this review into two main videos. The first one being the one that you're watching right now, where we look at the Escoot Natuno as a commuter bike. And then in a couple of weeks time, you can also review a video of me looking at this bike from a mountain bike standpoint. So if you are interested in seeing that video, then get subscribed down below because that is coming very, very soon. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Escoot Natuno from a commuter bike standpoint. Let's go! The Natuno looks very similar to its younger and cheaper brother, the Voyager. It has a very, very simple frame and design. Its identical black and blue colour scheme is nice, but it's the only colour that you can get. So just make sure that you like the colour scheme before you go ahead and purchase. Its surprisingly slim top tube also holds that battery, which is a whopping 522 watt hours. There are a few subtle differences between the two bikes. For example, this one is much bigger, coming in at 49 centimeters for its frame, rather than the 42 of the previous bike. Escoot still say that riders between five foot three and six foot seven can still ride this bike with ease. However, I found in my testing that my partner being within that range, but towards the smaller end, just didn't get on with this bike. She found it a little bit too big and hard to mount and unmount. So just keep in mind that this is a very tall bike, so it might not be perfect for everyone. In all, it can also carry a whopping 125 kilograms, including the rider and any kind of luggage you may be carrying with it, but a little more on that luggage later. It was super duper easy to put together thanks to the instructions and a informative YouTube video as well as a plethora of tools that came in the box that really did help you to get up and running really quickly and easily. Just remember when you're building this bike to put the left and the right pedals on the correct way. They have an L and an R on them, just make sure you do that. I made that mistake with my first ever electric bike and it didn't end well. I cross threaded it and it was a whole drama, you can view it up there or in the description down below. Just when building, make sure you've got your lefts and your rights correct. As is the case with many cheaper e-bikes like this one, the Natuno is pretty heavy, coming in at around 25 kilograms with the battery installed. Now, this is absolutely fine for the most part when you're riding it because you don't really notice. However, if you're using this as a commuter bike and needing to get it up a lot of stairs or carrying it to and from trains, just bear in mind that it is a pretty heavy bike. Taking that battery out obviously will help and you can just unplug it, stick it in your bag and distribute that weight a little bit better. But this is by no means a light bike. Escoot ships this bike with a front light that is already attached and that is powered by the internal battery. They also provide you with a rear light, but that is a battery powered one that just gets attached to the back of your seat. This is absolutely fine. However, I would have really liked to see that backlight being integrated with the rest of the bike and battery and powered through the main battery. Only because then when we pull the brakes, we could have that brake light showing up as well. And that would be a really good safety feature, particularly for this kind of bike. I found that front light to be bright enough in dim conditions, but you would not want to be riding this thing at night, purely because the throw of this light just is not enough. I would recommend maybe upgrading to a much bigger light if you plan to do a lot of nighttime riding. One rather strange omission, despite its off-roading nature, is mudguards. This bike doesn't come with mudguards, and if you want to have them, you'll have to install them yourself after market. 
This seems like a really weird omission, particularly as it is water resistant, so you can ride through the rain and in puddles as well, so just expect to get very muddy and wet if you don't buy some mud guards for this thing. The battery, as I mentioned, is integrated directly into the frame, and is actually pretty slick. It's really easy to take out using the key on the side, just twisting it and pulling that battery out. So you can charge this upstairs in your flat or deter thieves by carrying the battery with you when locking this bike up. On the contrary as well, if you have a place to charge this bike where you are storing it, you can also do that and you don't have to keep unplugging and plugging in that battery. If you're needing to know what battery life is looking like, then you can really quickly hold down that power button and you'll see a couple of LEDs to indicate just how much battery life you have. It's really not massively accurate. It will give you sort of a one, two or three little green lights to indicate some sort of battery level. So you'll get a general idea. But if you do want to know full battery percentages, then plug it in and get it connected up to the mobile app, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Let's talk about what makes this an e-bike though, the motor. Like every other S-Scoop model, the Natuno is powered by a 250 watt Bafang motor. And this alongside battery and controller all come with a two year warranty. A Bafang motor is actually a lot better than I expected for the price range here. It is a quality part and will most likely continue to run after that two year warranty period is up. And they're pretty easy to find as well so if you do need to change it out it should be pretty easy to do. This is a really nice quality part and I just wish that some of the other parts of this bike were of the same quality. We'll talk a little bit about that later but for its price point it is really nice to see a name brand Bafang motor on this bike. One issue I did have with the previous bike, which was the Wayfarer, I found that when I started to pedal, it would just propel me forwards with quite some force. This was because it didn't have a cadence sensor. It simply knew that you were pedaling and to just push as much of um, power as it needed to get you to the speed that you wanted to be. However, with a cadence sensor, it understands how much pressure you're putting down and will basically just match that pressure. What this means is you will get a much smoother experience with the assisted power. On the other hand though, if you're needing to take off from a red light quite quickly, you're going to find that you're going to have to put in a lot more effort to get to that high speed in order to continue. So it really is swings and roundabouts. Personally, I really like how smooth this ride is because I don't feel like I'm being propelled forwards in a way that I'm not able to control the bike. The power assist levels, as well as a few other key bits of information can be viewed on that large LED display that's built into the stem. The large display is easy to read unless you're in direct sunlight and gives you enough information on things like your assistance level, speed, front light, as well as the battery level in five segments. Unfortunately, out of the box, this kind of controller isn't very good. You're given two buttons, one to power the bike on and one to cycle between all of your uh, assistance levels from one to five. And once you get to five, it will cycle back to zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Now, I really don't like this design and I'm not alone. A lot of people don't like the way that to go from level one assistance to level zero assistance, you have to basically press that button four or five times in order to get it there. However, Escoot did address this in an aftermarket part that just allows you to replace the screen and have controls that will be on your handlebars instead. Now, I really wish this controller and this screen were enabled or bought with the bike, simply because this new controller that they've got on the bike currently is not fit for purpose. It's really hard to use and requires you to physically let go of the handlebars with one of your hands to change that assistance level. So if you're going to buy one of these bikes, I highly recommend buying one of the screens as well. I think they're like 80 or 90 pounds. And if you need help installing it, then I've got a video on that up there or in the description down below as well. As with most tech items these days, this bike does also come with a mobile app, which allows you to connect to the uh, bike via Bluetooth. There are a few interesting little features in here, but nothing that's going to continue to allow me to come back to the app for more features. Basically, you can see your assistance level, your battery percentage to a 
exact number, which is really nice, I guess, as well as the ability to enable and disable the front light and lock the bike. And by locking, this simply means that that back motor isn't gonna kick in until it is unlocked by either yourself or your phone being nearby. It's a cool feature, I guess, and sometimes will deter a robber, but let's be honest, if they're gonna take your bike, they're gonna take your bike, whether you're getting power assistance or not. This mobile app feels incredibly underutilized, and I feel like there should be a lot more to it. You can track your rides as well from within the app, but if you're gonna be doing that, I would recommend using something like Strava over the built-in S-Scoot utility. So what's this bike actually like to ride? Well, I'm glad you asked. As I mentioned before, we're actually gonna be talking about this from a, cons uh, from a commuter standpoint, basically taking this thing in the city with me rather than going off road. The Natuno is a comfortable ride overall. It's able to soak up small rocks and most urban obstacles such as erased manhole cover or potholes. It's worth noting that the suspension fork, gears and brakes are all not top quality components. They are at least branded, the shifter and the caskets are all Shimano pieces, as well as the zoom suspension fork on the front, unlike the Voyager's unbranded ones. I think it's okay to have some of these lower end components, especially because of how easy it is to change those out in the future for newer parts or more reliable parts if that's something that you wish to do. However, for the price point, I think the parts are absolutely fine and I've had no problems whatsoever up to this point. I absolutely love the pedal assist here. Between level one and five, you're getting a nice smooth amount of help to get you up some of the toughest hills. Honestly, I was able to get up a continuous incline for a good seven to eight minutes going up to see my parents. And this bike really didn't break a sweat. I did find that I had to push it up into the much higher ranges between the four and the five to really get the most out of the bike, however. On its lower levels, you're gonna get a much better range, but you're gonna be expected to put out a lot more power into the bike. That suspension fork on the front means that you've got a super smooth ride as well. I actually didn't feel at any point that it was getting really bumpy. I was able to mount and unmount curbs with ease. And honestly, this is one of the smoothest rides I've ever had from an electric bike. The brakes were super effective as well, and those gears were nice. However, when I was going up and down in gears, I did find that it would sometimes slip of course, this is easy to fix as you can tighten and loosen those gears. So just making sure that everything feels right for you is really key before riding this bike. The Voyager and Wayfarer allow for around 44 miles of range. They say that a tuna can go up to 65 miles. Now that is an insane range. However, I would take that with a grain of salt. Putting it into the number one level of assistance, I found myself that I could maybe get 50 miles if I was lucky. And because of course that 65 miles is on completely flat land and completely perfect weather conditions. It's still certainly an upgrade from the lower end models. And if you want that little bit of extra mileage, be that a five or 10 miles more, then this may well be the bike for you. Overall, I've absolutely fallen in love with this bike for commuting. The only real issue I have is there's no rack on the back of this bike. So to go to and from the shops is very, very difficult. I don't have anywhere to hold or carry extra materials with me. I can have a backpack on, of course, but I can't, for example, nip off to the shops, grab some fruit and come back again because I don't have any kind of rack on the back of the bike. And of course, that's not really what the Natuno was built for. Escu do have the Poluno, which allows for that rack on the back and you, is more of the city-based bike rather than this one, which is meant to be the mountain bike. For around £300 more, I think I would highly recommend going with the Natuno or the Poluno over the lower end Wayfair or Voyager. As far as e-bikes go, I think this is a pretty good starting point. You're not gonna have the best and top end components. So do expect to have to do a little bit of work to ensure that the bike is well maintained and you may have to change out parts more often than you may like from a more reputable brand. 
However, I really don't mind this and I think that this is an absolutely perfect starting point for anyone looking for an electric bike. Anyway guys, what do you think of the Escuna Tuno? Let me know in the comments section down below and of course get subscribed as well because we have got the second part of this review where we talk about this bike as a mounted bike and I genuinely can't wait for that because I had a lot of fun with this bike while riding off-road. Anyway guys, my name's been Robert, this has been Review Clue and I will catch you in the next one. Adios.